Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the Tennessee-Miami game, uh, uh, the showdown slate tonight. It's a very unique, I don't say unique, but it's a very interesting day in DFS because you have several sports of varying, uh, varying slate sizes. So it challenges your ability to deal with not only different sports, but different uh, different approaches. In other words, there's an NBA, a big 13 game slate where you don't have to worry too much about getting unique, if at all. And then you have these two showdown slates in the NFL where that's really the key is to get as unique as possible without, you know, playing lineups that have no chance. And then you have this two game NFL slate, which is, you know, still the, the priorities to get unique, but not quite as much of a priority as showdown. And then there's also a four game NHL slate. So it's very different slate sizes, challenges, different parts of your brain, and different parts of your skill sets. And I think it's a very interesting day in DFS. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, deal with the Tennessee Miami one first. And we have a special treat because I don't have my files exactly the way I want them. Uh, I'm actually going to use the true DFS uh, Saber Sim access. I usually just go Saber Sim by itself, but because I, I can. I don't have those actual files. I need to do it this way, but uh, hopefully it works out. So that's the first thing we do, by the way, is we up, we we replace, hopefully, um, the SaberSim projections with our own. Now you can do this with just keeping SaberSim by itself, whatever. But let's start by see, seeing if we can't um, access these projections. So what you would do if you were on the site to go to NFL Showdown Projections. And with any luck, the site will be cooperating. And this is the Miami one, so let's save this. Okay, very good. Now with any luck, what we're supposed to be able to do is upload this right to the site. So let's see if we can do that. And again, I very rarely let's get the right slate first of all. I very very rarely do it from this direction, but let's do it. Let's see what happens. Just go right like that. Uh, yeah, pretty good actually. Bad. So the first question that we want to ask, okay, is do we exclude unlisted players? In other words, if we have a projection for someone. But Saberson, well, if Saberson has like a 0.7 projection for someone and we don't, should we exclude them? And my my advice in a showdown slate is to leave everybody in. And this is one of the big overall things, the one of the big overall differences between showdown and and classic big slates is that where the idea in classic slates is to is to reduce. You know what I mean? Is to reduce players to make kind of like the big schools feel small, so to speak. In showdown, it's one of inclusion, and you want to include almost everybody if possible. Um, so the first thing I want to do is let's just take a, a look and see if there's anybody here that I can really get rid of. Um, I have to. I really shouldn't get rid of anybody because the last couple of times I've done that, it's really come back to get me. I mean, do I really need to play Alec Ingold though? I mean, they have that he's like the third running back. Would you really need to play the third running back? And Julian Hill is what is he, the third wide receiver, third tight end? Or Travis West Travis Wesco, Travis West, Travion Wesco is the second tight end for I have to say that I I you probably shouldn't use all these guys, but for the purposes of this, we are gonna use them. I mean, do we really need the, the fourth wide receiver, or I guess the fifth wide receiver, Colton Dowell. I mean, do you even need Jeff Wilson on a day like this? Um, so that's like the first decision you're and you're going to have to make that on your own. As a matter of fact, let's let's get rid of all these guys for now. All right, we'll get rid of the the fourth string tight end. We'll get rid of the fifth string wide receiver. We'll get rid of the well, is he the second what tight end? We'll keep him in the Travion Wesco. We'll keep Julian Hill in. We have to get rid of the, of, of the elegant goal. There's no way. I mean, with Jeff Wilson, and now we're talking about the fourth receiver. And everybody else is going to stay. 
So we have everything in, we have our ownerships in, and now I want to build. So what we're going to do is we're going to build 100 lineups um, for now. And we're going to build 2,000, and we could build 5,000. Let's, you know what, let's do that. Let's, let's build the full 5,000. Now I'm actually interested to see if this goes any faster than if it was offsite, because I usually use my sabers in offsite, but I guess it doesn't. What I could do in, in the meanwhile is I could upload my contests so that I can get a head start on the uh, on the contest sims. But no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this go. I'm going to pause this and get back to you about you know when this is done. It shouldn't be that long, but for you it'll see my two seconds anyway. All right, so we built uh, 100 lineups, and it's important to know what we're looking at here as far as these lineups, these exposures, and things like that. So what we're looking at is the ranking uh, by Sabre score, which is uh, um, under single game, Sabre score. Uh, it's, it's a combination of optimal plus upside plus some degree of ownership fade and list the top 100 lineups here. Now, I would say that this is literally the bare minimum, you know, you can do. You know, you you would you'd run this 100 lineups, you could put these guys in, and, uh, you know, legal minds may differ about whether just doing this might be even good enough to get you plus EV in these showdowns. Um, I'm, not, I'm honestly not sure. But this is actually the minimum that you need to do. Now, the second thing that you you could do um, is you can immediately start filtering for for uniqueness. One thing that we've not done, which I'm not going to do, is I'm not going to get into like football related takes. Like I'm not getting into groups. I'm not getting into, and I'm not going to play two running backs. I'm not getting into whatever. I, I'm trusting the 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 the, the, the game by game sims <laughs> to to factor that stuff in. Okay, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, what I am considering doing is running contest sims before doing, uh, um, with, you know, do medication before I try to get a little bit unique. And that would be either going for low ownership and or uh, leaving salary on the table. So the first thing we'll do is I guess we'll do contest sims first. And do we have them saved already? No, we probably don't within, um, Within uh, within this version of Saber Sim, so we could oh we could do this really nice and easily here. Okay, so we'll put this up here, and then we will add contest sim. This is the two point conversion. We'll add it for the lottery, and so we should be good. Now, if I'm not mistaken, we go back into build number one. It will show. will show the contest sim information. Well, it won't show the information. It will, it will show the information, but it won't show the checked off. We have to check it off here. All right, so let's let's now do our contest sims. How about that? So we'll run contest sims. And I'm going to consider this the next kind of step of things that you sort of have to do, you know? I'm, I'm not actually sure that that's the case. I mean, it's possible that what you can do without running contest sims is better. I'm just not sure how effective the contest sims are. I mean, I know that if the ownership projections are good and the field lineups that you're presuming are good, then using contest sims is is probably the next minimum thing that you should do, but it's not 100% positive, but we're trying everything, you know? So we ran the contest sims. And then the thing we do after that is now we re-rank all these guys by these contests. So we'll take the, the lottery, the 100K for first thing, we'll re-rank things by RAROI, which is risk-adjusted ROI. And now we have this. Now, again, it's important to know what, what we're doing here. So we've run 5,000 lineups. We've run a contest sim. And we have now compared our 5,000 lineups to the lineups that SaberSim believes the public is going to play. And then what we're doing is we're figuring out which of those 5,000 lineups rates to have the best risk, you know, uh, risk adjusted rate of return 
against that particular contest, and then it rates them in that way. So we have these 100 liners. So I, I believe, again, I'm, I can't promise the, the effectiveness of the contest, okay, because they're, they're new and the ownership projections are what they are. Um, but I do think that that this would be the next step. And I would prefer these 100 over the 100 that we did before. Okay, so I think we're starting with this. Um, so I guess what we could do for now is we could save these to the contest. We're just putting that, those in the lottery. Now, another, another thing that I've been advised is a good idea is you could change your min uniques at this point from one to something else. Um, I have not simulated that. I have not run that. You know, uh, you could get away with doing min uniques as many as three before Saber Simi yells at you. But I think that's pretty reasonable, you know, to spread out your exposures a little bit. And one of the things that you'll see when this happens is all kinds of stuff in the captain. You know, Will, Jeff Wilson, the captain, Cedric Wilson, the captain, Traylon Burks in the captain, Braxton Barris in the captain. And that's where you're getting a lot of that extra exposure when you do min uniques more than one or two. So what I think we can do is split the difference here and go min uniques two. So we can save that. So we'll replace those as well. Um, so what we've done now, <laughs> once again, is we have we have uploaded, uploaded projections, made 5,000 lineups based on those projections using Saber Sim, you know, try to get upside. And then also we had a contest sim where we're comparing those to the actual contest we're in. And then we're getting a little bit more diversified by playing Min Unix 2, and we've saved those. So I think that we're probably in good shape right now. The only question is whether we think that we're unique enough in this um in this uh contest, right? And like for example, uh we we don't want to run lineups that have a lot of dupes. So how do we measure that? Well, let's pull up that geo mean spreadsheet, which I have referred to many times, and I am attempting to get that on the website. And what this does is it kind of estimates like, you know, what your ownership of your lineup should be if you want to get duped a certain amount of times or less, for example. So in this particular tournament, when you go back to the number of players, it's 23,529. So we put that in here, 23,529. And if you want to access only one dupe, for example, that's like you need a geometric mean of no more than 18.6. And you'll see that if we try to only take those lineups, Saberson is not going to be very happy. So I'll show you. So we go even in min uniques one and we do another filter or we add filter and we say uh, oh, I didn't save this. That's so funny. That's so funny. I didn't, I didn't save this as a metric over there. That really stinks. Can I do this now? Well, can we, is there another filter we can use? See, geo mean is not listed in here. It's not even listed in here. Now, how do we add a, how do we add a metric? Lineup rules, I mean, lineup rules are big? No. Your build settings, custom sim settings, load settings. Hmm. I forgot how to do this. We, can we add a filter? Can we do a custom filter from here? No, can't do it. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to we're not going to do that over here then. Uh, I guess the only thing that we can do at this point 
to pause and try to find out how to how to add the metric here because I have it added to my regular saber sim thing. Like if you look at my regular saber sim here, you can add a filter and then it has it listed as this metric. But it doesn't look like I can do that here for some reason. How to add metric on saber sim. This is to edit. It's over here, no. Where do you think that you can add a metric? I don't know the answer. Pause. I'm an idiot, it says right here, add metric. So my metric is going to be, um, It's going to be, where can I find this? Would it be under my own? Geomean. Okay. Normalized value. Um, I don't want to add the weight. Uh, value. Okay, there it is. So save metric. All right, very good. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, let's see if we learn on the fly. So add filter, my metric, less than, what do we say, 19? So let's see how many lineups we get. And we actually do get a whole bunch of these, huh? You do get a whole bunch of these, but what you end up getting, like you said, is T. Wesco, all kinds of stuff. Okay. Um, so let's see how many in the captain, what we'd end up having here. Captain, I mean, we're getting all Kyle Phillips in the captain, all kinds of things in the captain. Um, however, I mean, I, I think I've made worse plays, right? Um, so what you can do then, if you want, you didn't want to add that as a filter, take that, take that away. Let's move up a little bit. Let's add a, uh, 22. And if we did this, and I just want to kind of gauge what type of things that would get us. So here we're getting the normal captains, maybe a little, maybe a little bit. Jeff Wilson, which we don't really need, or, and then what do we have in the flex? All right, so regular guys over here. So you have to have a little something extra. So Julian Hill, Travion Wesco, guys like that are just going to make it into these lineups. And here we're going to have a geo mean of 22. So what that means, right? is we're talking about five dupes. Actually, that's not that bad. Is there really only 23,500 in this thing? Okay. This is actually not bad then. So we just get a little bit of the Travion Wesco. And this is how you try to win all the cheats. Okay. Um, so if you like this, <laughs> I'm not saying again there's the answer, but but we'll save these and then we'll do this. I've learned to not really try to worry too much about not liking what you see. You know, I just kind of just kind of go with the fact that the projections were good, that everything was good, and all that stuff. So Travion Wesco is going to be the, you know, the my cross to bear, so to speak. Okay, uh, next thing. Let's take a look at the, the 222. Let's see how we deal with that one. You don't need the filter for that. You could just rate this one by risk-adjusted ROI and probably just put this one in as is. All right. yeah, it's, listen, it's not the worst idea in the world to get a, to get a look-see at this. All right. But aside from that, yeah, we could just put this in as is.
then we download these. We change these and we should be off to the races. Now again, one thing we have not done yet at all is talk about the game, right? Uh, and that's for others, you know, like that, that's, I, I really feel as though talking about game flow and talking about the game itself, all that stuff is just all factored into these projections already. You know, I could spend an hour explaining to you that, oh, if Derrick Henry gets the running game going, he's going to be in good shape. But you know what? If he doesn't, then he might not get as much work because they're going to be coming from behind and TJ Spears might be, might, might get more work. And, and yes, Tyree kills a really good play. And yes, Tua is a really good play. And, uh, but more than almost anything else in DFS, NFL showdown is nothing to do with who's a good play. It just has to do with how bad of a play do you want to accept in, in the, in the uh, quest to be unique. Because that's all you're really looking to do is, is not be duped with 55 people or 100 people when you're playing these types of showdown slates. Because, yeah, okay, look, if you knew for a fact that the six guys that you were playing were going to score the optimal, then, yeah, I don't care how many people you're duping with. But but in general, you really don't want to go for – I don't even give a number, but but your, your dupe should really be limited in the, in the lottery specifically. Um, well, in all showdown tournaments. Okay, so this was a little bit clumsy because, again, I wasn't really used to using the true DFS Sabreson interface. But I do hope you at least learned something about how to set these things up. Um, uh, and we, we, we learned. We learned how to set our custom metric. So everybody learned something here, including myself. Okay, that'll do it for the Miami, Tennessee. We're going to do a separate video on Green Bay, New York, and then we'll also do one of the two games today.